Welcome to Genuine Truth, where we dive profound into the subtleties of human cooperation and correspondence. In this episode, we investigate the entrancing universe of nonverbal communication, revealing the secret messages passed on through unpretentious signals, articulations, and stances. From the inconspicuous raise of an eyebrow to the delicate bit of a hand, each development recounts to a story, uncovering insights about our feelings, expectations, and connections. Prepare to find the genuine truth behind each development, articulation, and signal as we set out on this edifying excursion together. Welcome to Genuine Truth, where understanding the implicit language of life prompts further associations and more extravagant encounters. Here are the signs. 1. Eye contact. Eye-to-eye -eye connection is a principal part of nonverbal correspondence. At the point when somebody keeps in touch during a discussion, it connotes consideration, commitment, and interest. It demonstrates that the individual is effectively tuning in and engaged with the cooperation. Eye-to-eye -eye connection can shift in force and length relying upon social standards, individual character qualities, and the idea of the connection between people. Understanding the subtleties of eye-to-eye -eye connection can assist people with exploring social associations all the more actually, building affinity and cultivating positive connections. 2. Smiling. Grinning is a general articulation of satisfaction and positive inclination. A veritable grin, frequently alluded to as the Duchenne grin, includes the muscles around the eyes, making the eyes crease or grin alongside the mouth. This kind of grin is viewed as more genuine and true contrasted with a constrained or considerate grin that just includes the mouth. In any case, it's fundamental to perceive that not all grins are certified. Certain individuals might grin as a social show or to veil their actual sentiments. In this manner, it's fundamental to consider other nonverbal prompts and the setting of the circumstance when deciphering a grin. 3. Mirroring Reflecting or mimicry is a subliminal way of behaving where people emulate the nonverbal communication, signals, looks, or discourse examples of others. It frequently happens during social communications, especially between individuals who feel a feeling of association or compatibility. Reflecting is accepted to be a nonverbal sign of compassion, understanding, and common enjoying. Furthermore, reflecting can be utilized purposely as a social leverage methodology to lay out compatibility or construct trust in relational connections. By unpretentiously reflecting the nonverbal communication of others, people can make a feeling of commonality and solace, causing the other individual to feel more quiet and responsive. 4. Proximity, closeness, or the actual distance between people, is a significant part of nonverbal correspondence that impacts social collaborations and connections. The distance kept up with between individuals can pass on different messages about their degree of closeness, solace, and limits. Understanding the elements of nearness can assist people with exploring social circumstances all the more successfully, guaranteeing that they regard others' very own space while likewise cultivating a feeling of closeness and association when suitable. 5. Touch Contact is a strong type of nonverbal correspondence that can convey a great many feelings, expectations, and social implications. People have a characteristic impulse for contact, and actual contact assumes a vital part in building and keeping up with connections. Understanding the job of touch and correspondence can assist people with exploring social communications delicately and really cultivating further associations and improving relationship fulfillment. 6. Posture. Act alludes to the manner in which people position their bodies while sitting, standing, or moving. A nonverbal sign passes on data about an individual's feelings, perspectives, and character qualities. Stance can impact how others see and cooperate with people in group environments. Accordingly, focusing on stance can further develop how others see you, as well as impact your own contemplations, sentiments, and ways of behaving. By embracing a sure and open stance, people can project confidence and authority, upgrading their social communications and connections. 7. Gestures. Signals are developments of the hands, arms, or body that go with discourse and convey importance in correspondence. They are an essential part of nonverbal correspondence upgrading the expressiveness and lucidity of verbal messages. Generally speaking, signals assume a fundamental part in correspondence, adding extravagance and subtlety to verbal cooperations and working with shared understanding between people. 8. Facial Expressions Looks are maybe the most strong and all-inclusive type of nonverbal correspondence. 
They include developments of the muscles in the face that convey a great many feelings, mentalities, and goals. The human face is equipped for delivering great many various looks, each with its interesting mix of muscle developments and subtleties. Looks are urgent for communicating feelings like bliss, misery, outrage, dread, shock, and repugnance, among others. 9. Hair play. Hair play alludes to any control or change of the hair, for example, whirling, stroking, or throwing. A typical nonverbal way of behaving can convey different feelings, perspectives, and goals. Notwithstanding, it's fundamental to consider the specific circumstance and recurrence of hair play when it is importance to deciphering. At times, extreme or tedious hair play might show apprehension or weakness instead of tease. 10. Body orientation. Body direction alludes to the course where people position their bodies comparative with others during social collaborations. A nonverbal prompt passes on data about their degree of commitment, interest, and consideration. 11. Blushing. Becoming flushed is a physiological reaction portrayed by the blushing of the skin, especially on the face and neck, because of humiliation, modesty, or excitement. It happens because of expanded bloodstream to the veins close to the skin surface, bringing about a noticeable flush or blushing of the skin. 12. Preening. Trimming alludes to prepping ways of behaving or changes made to one's appearance, for example, fixing clothing, fixing hair, or streamlining wrinkles. A typical nonverbal conduct serves both pragmatic and social capabilities. Generally, dressing is a characteristic and versatile way of behaving that assumes a huge part in friendly communications and self-show. By focusing on dressing ways of behaving, people can acquire experiences into individual self-discernments, close to home states, and social inspirations, upgrading their comprehension and adequacy in friendly circumstances. 13. Foot pointing. Foot guiding alludes toward the heading wherein people position their feet during social connections. A nonverbal sign gives important experiences into their degree of interest, commitment, and profound association with others. 14. Nodding. Gesturing is a typical nonverbal way of behaving portrayed by the all-over development of the head, normally in light of verbal correspondence. A general motion conveys understanding, affirmation, and understanding. 15. Head tilt. Head slant is a nonverbal conduct described by the tendency or revolution of the head aside. An unobtrusive yet critical prompt conveys interest, mindfulness, and sympathy in friendly connections. At the point when people slant their heads marginally during a discussion, it flags that they are effectively tuning in and sincerely took part in the cooperation. It shows transparency and receptivity to the next individual's viewpoint, cultivating a feeling of association and compatibility. Along these lines, Focusing on head slant ways of behaving can assist people with conveying compassion, construct affinity, and fortify social bonds with others, cultivating further associations and shared figuring out and relational connections.